Hopefully, at this point, I've convinced you that Python is a successful programming language. But what makes it so successful? To answer that, we'll have to take a look at the history of Python. And any history of Python starts with this man, Quido Van Rossum, creator of Python and ex-benevolent dictator for life. The team back in 1994 released Python 1, which stuck around for a couple of years, before it was superseded by Python 2. Python 2 was around for a very long time, only winding down at the start of 2020. But Python 3 is the present and future of the language. Released in 2008, it's only been picking up steam as Python 2 has been wilting. At this point, only Python 3.6 or more is currently supported, but we'll be using Python 3.9 in this course, the most recent version that was released just a few weeks ago. And along the way, lots of other tools popped up that extended the reach of Python and helped to make it such a successful programming language, tools like NumPy, SciPy, or Matplotlib. However, in my opinion, something much more important ran through all of these versions of Python that characterized the language and that have helped shape it into the successful language it is today. That is its philosophy. And Python's philosophy is actually hidden in an Easter egg. If you go to a Python interpreter where you can execute Python code and you type import this, meaning import the essence of this, you know, import Python itself, import whatever it means to be Python, you get back an Easter egg, a piece of literature written by Tim Peters called The Zen of Python. And it's so important, I'm going to read you the whole thing. It starts, beautiful is better than ugly. Explicit is better than implicit. Simple is better than complex, but complex is better than complicated. Flat is better than nested. Sparse is better than dense and readability counts. So far, we see that these aren't formal specifications for how a language is designed. It doesn't say we need braces or we don't need braces. We need this sort of naming scheme or we need that sort of naming scheme. Rather, these are statements about aesthetics, about beauty, about design principles that might guide a language's evolution. In recognition that code is read more often than it is written, Python says, hey, readability really counts in the code we write and in the language we use. The Zen of Python continues. Special cases aren't special enough to break the rules, although practicality beats purity. Errors should never pass silently, unless explicitly silenced. In the face of ambiguity, refuse the temptation to guess. There should be one, and preferably only one, obvious way to do it, although that way may not be obvious at first, unless you're Dutch. A joking reference to the fact that Van Rossum and other creators were Dutch. And then Zen of Python finishes. Now is better than never, although never is often better than right now. If the implementation is hard to explain, it's a bad idea. If the implementation is easy to explain, it may be a good idea. And lastly, namespaces are one honking great idea. They're so great. Let's do more of those. We've seen an emphasis on practicality, a focus on doing things you can do now but deferring perfection, and a focus on human readability. All of these hint at Python's high-level approach. And if I had to summarize all this in a single line, I would say that programmers are more important than programs. And this is the summary of the Zen of Python. I'll say it again for the people in the back. Programmers are more important than programs in the eyes of Python. This wasn't always a given. There was a time when computers and their programs were much more expensive than the lab technicians. So programming languages, design patterns, and culture evolved around the idea that the program is the most important thing. File size, explicit performance, complexity. And certainly, there are still programs for which those things are important. Programs that handle sensitive information, programs that run billions of times a second. These are programs where the program itself is extremely important, the most vital part, far more than any programmer cost, efficiency, or even morale. But Python takes an alternate view. Python says, you know what? We're going to assert that programmers are more important than programs. Python's not the first language to say this. In fact, many new high-level languages took this tack. But Python was one of the first to codify these principles in a statement of philosophy. And as a result, the idea that programmers and humans form the center of Python programming has guided the language and shifted its evolution to make it such a successful language. So really, if you believe that programmers, you, the person watching this, are more important than the hunk of material on which you're watching this, then Python is probably a good language for you.